Well, good morning, everybody, in this uh, side event uh, hosted by ECRR. My name is uh, Hill Kuipers. I'm secretary of ECRR, and um, ECRR uh, is a network, a pan-European network, and uh, as you know, we have a mission, enhancing river restoration, and we, we do that uh, together with our partners and the national centers. Uh, in a short introduction by our chairman, Bart, uh, you will hear a bit more about it. Um, it is with great pleasure that I uh, may chair today this uh, site event during this uh, conference. And um, I would like to welcome our speakers, first of all. Um, of course, our chairman, Bart Fokkens. We have Benoit Terrier uh, on behalf of the community of practice, and Yuka Jormola, who will present uh, something about uh, a tool, about the River Wiki. But last but not least, I'm uh, very pleased to have here uh, our guest from Asia, especially Professor Chen uh, from China, who will uh, present uh, something about the Asian River Restoration Network. We are very pleased with that. Um, I think this side event is a perfect occasion to share uh, information and also uh, to learn and present uh, more about uh, the network, both in Europe and in Asia. And uh, of course, there is also opportunity to ask questions after the presentations, though only a few, because we have a tight schedule. Um, the program, uh, apart from the introduction and welcome by uh, the chairman, uh, is um, uh, three uh, subjects, the community of practice, wiki tool, and uh, international relations, especially with the Asian River Restoration Network. And because we have a tight schedule, I propose that we start immediately now, and I would like to invite, uh, first of all, our chairman, Bart Fokkens. Well, thank you very much, Hill. Good morning, uh, everybody. I, uh, of course, prepared myself on uh, what I would tell this morning uh, to the occasion of this uh, side event about the ECRR. Uh, I've changed a little bit my mind the last few weeks because, uh, as it was said yesterday already, uh, Nigel Holmes passed away, who was at the basis of the ECRR, and I had on my desk for three years an article from uh, Nigel and from Martin Jaynes about the development of the uh, ECRR. And I'm not going to tell the whole story as it has been written in, in this uh, article, but I will just read the short uh, summary because it's very informative to all who are present here. It describes actually some thoughts about how the ECRR was established, why and how it could uh, develop. He wrote a paper given by an East European speaker at the 1990s Conservation and Management of Rivers Conference inspired and shamed at the same time, inspired because she showed what could be done in restoring rivers with tenacious effort of dedicated people, without legislative support, shamed because many of us were achieving precious little despite having legislative support. The next morning, a few people met and plotted to form a group to bring about change, and the rest is history. Then two years later, in 1992, the UK River Restoration Project, the precursor to the River Restoration Center in the UK was launched with the aim of demonstrating how to deliver river restoration and convey the multiple benefits of it. In 1994, in partnership with the Danes, a European project was launched that completed flagship river restoration projects. The project also established a European Center for River Restoration, a network of organizations disseminating information on river restoration and assisting countries to develop their own centers, projects, and plans. Over the past 15 years, the first centers in Europe have helped to establish many national centers across the continent. In parallel, Australia, Asia also formed international river restoration networks or centers. The International River Foundation, to Nigel's opinion, truly acts for river restoration at a global scale. This was written three years ago, and I think we all thank Nigel for all his efforts in river restoration in establishing basically also the uh, 
the ECRR. He wrote a nice book together with another author that was published in August, and those who want to know more about it, they can contact me afterwards to get uh, the details. It's very worthwhile to read. It is about river restoration uh, in UK. I thank you very much to yeah, listen to this short summary of Nigel, and let us say rest in peace, Nigel, and we continue with his work where he has been worked on all his life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bart, uh, for your introduction and remembering of uh, Nigel. Thank you very much. So now we continue with uh, the program. And first of all, I'd like to invite uh, Professor Chen from China, and you will uh, introduce us in the world of Asian River Restoration Networks. Thank you very much. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my honor here to uh, for the report. Today's topic is about river restoration in Asia and the Asia River Restoration Network. Uh, Three persons from ARN are here, including our chairperson, Professor Ziping Liu. And if there is uh, any problem, I don't know, and I think they will help me. <clears throat> uh, there are 48 countries in Asia, and they are a large difference on weather, hydrology, topography, and economic development labor in different countries. Therefore, my topic is will be confined in East Asia, I mean China, Japan, and Korea. The, pre uh, the presentation uh, includes four parts. The first one is the road to river restoration. <clears throat> uh, in East Asia, each country went nearly the same road, pollution, and then clean up. The situation is consistent with the environmental Kuznets curve hypothesis, which was proposed by Grossman and Kuroji in 1992. The hypothesis indicates that during the developing period of a country, the environment pollution increased with the growth of GDP, while during the developed period, the GDP increased to a critical point, the environmental pollution will be decreased with the growth of GDP. <clears throat> Japan and Korea are developed countries. The road to the river restoration is near the same, taking Japan as an example. <clears throat> it faced environmental problem in 1940s to 1960s, and the famous environmental pollution event connected with Minata disease and Ita Ita disease. These problems forced the Japanese government to take measures. In 1958, Japan made a Water Quality Conservation Act. Then, in 1970, Water Pollution Control Act was made. From 1950s to 1980s, the main aims were water quality improvement, river beautification, and river fund amenities. Till 1990, Japan launched the Nature oriented river works and paid more attention on ecosystem, biodiversity, and water cycle, etc. In 2014, Japan made Water Cycle Police Basic Act. Here are some photos which depict different period of rivers in Japan. <clears throat> China is a developing country. Till 1970, environmental protection agencies were set up. After economic reform, the economy have, have been in high-speed development for 30 years. At the same time, the environmental pollution is getting more and more serious. In 1994, water pollution treatment in river basin was taken out, and more efforts were on three large rivers, I mean, Huaihe, Haihe and Liaohe, three large rivers in China, and three large lakes, Taihu, Caohu, and Dianci. <clears throat> At the end of the century, China began to carry out river restoration. Because of fast urbanization, some suggestions on protection and restoration of river ecosystems were proposed by Ministry of Water Resources in 2004. 
and 13 cities carried out pilot work on river restoration in 2009. On the uh, river restoration of small and middle-sized rivers were carried out in China, which had a big influence on river restoration in rural area. In 2013, China began pilot work of water eco-civilization construction. Therefore, the river restoration becomes a very important part of social development. Uh, now I turn to the second part, river restoration method and the theories applied in Asia. Uh, during the river restoration, several important things should be taken into account. For example, climate change, flood disaster, hydrology, water utilization, water quality, landscape, natural ecosystem, diversity, therefore, a synthetic approach should be used. In the last decades, several methods or theories had been proposed and used in Asia, which had great influence on river restoration in these countries. First, I'd like to talk about the first one, is nature oriented river restoration. This, it was proposed by Japanese experts, but originally is imported from Europe. The main idea of this method is to mimic a natural river system and create proper structure and hydrograph of rivers, such as stepful structures in mountainous rivers and poor reef structure for aquatic life, the creation of proper hydrological processes, etc., and the local materials should be used during the river restoration. Uh, the stepwork structures are often ap appeared in mountainous rivers, which can not only stabilize the river, but create good habitat for aquatic life. And the poor river structures are very important for diversity of habitat. This theory was used in Japan since 1990 and has been played an important role in the river management and restoration in Japan. The second method, <coughs> anti plan theory. This theory was proposed by Professor Kong Jian Yu from Peking University and has been widely used in urban planning in China. Before urban planning, the critical eco ecological process should be deeply started. The first one, hydrology. We should start the uh, precipitation, DEM, run of coefficient and historical flood and for guaranteeing the safety of the city. And geological disaster safety pattern must be con considered, such as land cover, slope, and the disaster distribution, etc. And the diversity safety pattern should be started also, which determines the urban growth pattern. Uh, cultural heritage should be preserved and providing a safe and a comfortable leisure space for people. When the restriction factors are determined, <coughs> the urban planning will be carried out later. Here is a small example. Uh, this is a, a little town in Guizhou province, Liu Penshui, a small town, uh, southwest China. First, the drainage pattern is determined in the, uh, the first uh, photo, and then, Several step wetlands and is, are designed in the lower area of the city. The step wetlands can not only detain flood water, but improve water quality also. Now, this wetlands becomes the famous recreation park in the city. The third method, setting water system before urban planning. The idea of this method is nearly the same as any plan theory. The method is, in Chinese, it means yi shui jin cheng, which means that the water system will determine the pattern of the city. The idea was proposed by experts from IWHR, I mean China Institute of Water Resources and Hydropower Research in 2008. And it was applied in the planning of northern Northern Water Town, 
of Harbin, Heilongjiang Province, China. The total area of the new town is 578 square kilometer. According to the river system, two longitudinal rivers and four lateral rivers were designed, and 14 legs were placed. The total area uh, of the water is about 11 square kilometer, covers 12% of the town. This town is now under construction. The fourth method, comprehensive planning method. <clears throat> this method is also a kind of a synthetic method, nearly the same as we uh, just mentioned above. <clears throat> For this method, several problems we should consider during the uh, planning. We call this method with S uh, seven water theory. <clears throat> First problem is uh, water safety. We should uh, consider the first important thing, I think. Because uh, during the planning, we should calculate the maximum flow rate during the flood season, which determines the width, heights of the river. At the same time, new technology, such as LID method, should be used for reduce the flood risk. Second problem is uh, water usage. Of course, at the same time, the eco ecological water demand should be considered. Aquatic life may live in different water conditions in different periods, such as migration and spawning. When the protection object is determined, and the hydrologic process should be carefully calculated according to its habitat. And, uh, Measures should also be considered for improving water quality. And aquatic habitat should be properly con constructed and protected. For example, create a proper structure for the river, uh, set fish ne nest blocks in some places, and change materials of the riverbed, etc. <clears throat> and the landscape along the river should also be called, uh, should be coordinated with the near buildings, and the vegetation on the waterfront should be planted carefully. Not only consider its biological traits, but its shape and color also. During the river restoration, some symbols may be constructed along the river, along the river, depicting the relationship between man and the water in the history for exhibiting the water culture. When the environment along the river is improved, the price of the real estate will be increased also. Therefore, we could raise funds in the market for river restoration. Here is an example. I mean the uh, over planning of the urban ecological corridor along the har, uh, Harbin Sunghua River. And the total length of the Plan River is about 120 kilometers, and the water surface area is about 400 square kilometers. The first step in the planning is collect the basic information, including geography and the geomorphic condition, hydrograph, climate, water quality, soil condition, birds, fishes, and vegetation, etc. The left one depicts the road of birds migration, and the right one depicts the distribution of feeding area, spawning site, and the shelter area of fishes. The second step is ecological sensitivity analysis and the determine ecological function of each area. In this figure, three regions are divided. That is, ecological conservation area, ecological protection area, and a landscape area. When the cell pattern of ecosystem is determined, the detailed design of the river could be carried out. Now the third part is river restoration cases in Asia. First, let's talk about Japan. Uh, here we, we give four uh, cases. Case one. Nature restoration in Maruyama River Basin. By recurring of wetland systems, 
and the water cycle, the groundwater level is increased, and the sediment in inflow is decreased. At the same time, the environment for fish and aquatic insects is improved. Case two, <clears throat> nature restoration in Kusiro wetland by recovering of waterland ecosystems and the water cycle, the groundwater level is increased. And the sediment, oh, I'm sorry, is there something wrong? Oh, yeah, yes, yes. <clears throat> this is the second, uh, the case two. Now the case three. Waterfront city revitalization in uh, Hiroshima city. Restoring the river bank, uh, river fund to create a good environment for the local person. And the last uh, case for in Japan is a start on the swamp restoration in Ibari River from a standpoint of water cycle. Restoring the uh, swamp through water cycle analysis for increasing the groundwater level. Now let's talk about the river restoration in China. <clears throat> Several important things affecting river restoration in China. The first one is major science and technology program for water pollution control and treatment. Uh, and the main purpose, uh, purpose is to improve the water quality of rivers and lakes in China. And the second one is river restoration of small and middle size. Uh, and this one is uh, carried out from 2009 to 2015. About 5,000 rivers and the total length is about uh, 67 thousand kilometers, and the total investment is 186 billion yuan. And the third way is fast urbanization in China, the most important driving force for river restoration. And the last one is water eco-civilization construction. <coughs> uh, this figure depicts the pilot projects of river restoration with middle and small size in China which was carried out from 2009 to 2015. Here, I just wanted to give some examples. The first one is river restoration of Yunlin River in Beijing. Uh, this project is carried out from 2009 to 2011. Yunlin River, the mother river, is the largest river in Beijing. Since 1980s, Beijing has been in fastly developing, and the urban water utilization has been increased rapidly. The river in Beijing was dry up, and the land along the river been desertification. The river began an important source of limestone for improving the environment in this area. Union River was restored since 2009, and the urban cycled water is pumped in the river. Four lakes were constructed along the river and many new technologies were used in the restoration. Now, Union River has become one of the firm, famous places in Beijing. Many people come here for leisure. <clears throat> Second example is river restoration case uh, in, in China. <clears throat> it's, uh, uh, oh, this, this is Union River, okay. Now it's very beautiful. <clears throat> the second one is, uh, River restoration in Shenzhen. The small river, rivers in Shenzhen were heavily polluted during the last decades. And in the recent five years, these rivers were restored by means of nature-oriented method. Now, the water is clean and the habitat is improved. And aquatic insects and fish return again. The third one, uh, I just want to talk about the river restoration in rural areas. I just mentioned about that uh, from 2009 to 2015, uh, the China has carried out some, a lot of works in the river restoration in, with middle and small size, okay. Uh, although the flood control is the main purpose during the river harnessing with middle and small size, the Chinese government paid more attention on river restoration and made several guidelines on river restoration. The government also organized exports to guide the river restoration. The ecosystem of the uh, restored river is, is improved now. Here are some example, uh, uh, some photos of restored rivers in different provinces, include Anhui, Hubei, Liaolin, 
and uh, Zhejiang province. <coughs> okay, now let's talk uh, the river investigation in Korea. Of course, the very important projects are the nation's four main river, mainly aiming to help the seasonal flowers and the droughts and have belonged to this country for a thousand years. The four large rivers are Han River, Jin, Jin River, Yongsan River, and Nadong River. This project were carried out from 2009 to 2012. Now these rivers has uh, become beautiful places in Korea. Uh, this is photos uh, we took last year, last winter. Of course, the most famous project is Qin uh, Yi Chua. It is a fam so famous that I, I think almost everyone has visited this place. So I think it's not necessary to talk about it here. <coughs> of course, in recent uh, years, KCT, Korea Institute of Construction Technology, pays more attention on abundant channel uh, restoration and they proposed a method to restore this kind of river. Here are some examples. And the right one is the REC, uh, the River Experimental Center of KCT. Okay, the, my last topic is about ARRN, Asia River Restoration Network. ARRN is a non-political organization for exchanging knowledge and the technology information on restoration of rivers and water shows in Asia, which was established in November 2006. Now it has three national RRN, China, Korea, Japan, and a regional RRN, TRRN, and several known RRN organization members include governments, NGOs, and provides and uh, and uh, Paris. <coughs> the secretariat is set in turn in national RRN. Now it is located in IWHR, China Institute of Water Resources and Hydropower Research. And the present chairperson is Professor Ziping Liu, and the former one is Professor Tamai, the former chair chairman of IAHR. The main works of RIN include website development, information deliver, and information sharing, and uh, holding forum and seminar, and the technical exchange and training, research work, and the publication some uh, books, and expansion members, etc. Of course, in the, in the recent years, we have held governing council meeting each year. This year is the ninth uh, GCM. And they regularly hosting international forum on waterfront and watershed restoration. This year is uh, the 11th forum now. And they're publishing river restoration guidebooks, such as uh, the reference guideline for restoration by eco, eco uh, compatible approach in river basin of Asia. Now it's the second version. And Technical con uh, consultations on river restoration, such as last year, we just uh, ha have a consulting on the integrated planning of PCN river system, Chengdu, last year, during the I uh, 35th IAHR. <coughs> and the last one is academic exchange and, and the technical investigation. <coughs> ARN has been played an important role in river restoration in Asia. Here are some photos of our activities. In, uh, the right one is, uh, uh, last year we visited the KSD and the KRN. European countries are the pioneers in river restoration and have got great successes. Exports in European countries have been done a lot of research work on this field and they proposed several new theories, such as give room for rivers and the cycle, uh, cycle of floodplain regeneration, etc. European, uh, European Union also made a lot of guidelines and relations on this field, such as 
Water Framework Directive, the European Habitat Directive, the Birth Directive, etc. The European Central for River Restoration aims to enhance and promote river restoration and sustainable management and river management throughout Europe, and has done a lot of work on this field. She also acts at the international level as a network of networks. Most of the country in Asia are in developing period and are facing huge pressure on the environment, such as India and China. River restoration is a difficult task for them. ARN helps to strengthen the cooperation between ARN and ECR for promoting river restoration and a sustainable river management in Asia. We hope to get your help. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Benoit Terrier. I work for the Rhone Mediterranean and Corsica um, Water Catchment Agency. Um, I have the honor and pleasure um, to talk on behalf of my colleagues from the community of practice. Um, and I'm going to give you some feedback, um, some key messages from the workshop that we held um, in Leon uh, last September. Um, the theme of the workshop was public participation and stakeholders' involvement in river restoration. But first of all, just uh, a few words um, on the um, community of practice. It was uh, launched at a session that was chaired by ECRR um, during the last World Water Forum in France, in Marseille. Um, the general idea was that by having a community of practice with uh, river basins that would share best practice together, those river basins would achieve more than by working as sole individuals. Um, so five river basins applied for the community of practice. So we had the Irpin River Basin in Ukraine, the Arpa River Basin in Armenia, the Irwell River Basin in UK, Duero Basin, um, from which the Orbigo um, belongs, in Spain, um, the Rhone River Basin. The facilitators were ECRR, DLG and Wetlands International. Um, we had a kickoff workshop in Lyon last year. Uh, we signed a, a memorandum of understanding last year in Vienna, here. And um, we thought that to have one workshop a year with face-to-face -face meeting um, would help to make progress within the community of practice and to exchange in a better way um, best practice. So we had a workshop on public engagement and stakeholders' involvement. Why choose this topic? Um, it's already been discussed many times, I think, during this conference. River restoration is often not so well understood, and it can be seen as a drastic change um, from past practice. And we need much more than a good technical project to convince that action is required. So we all thought that the question of public participation and stakeholders' involvement is central to the emergence of good river restoration projects. Um, so I'm going to give you one key message um, that I think we all agreed, um, and it was beautifully phrased by the Earwell River Basin. Um, recognizing and incorporating the views of our communities as is an integral component of any river restoration project. And our communities uh, must be a part of the process from the very beginning, as it is them that will protect and enhance it in the future. So how do we do that in practice? Now, what I'm sharing is not theory, is what is happening um, among the different river basins. Um, first of all, um, we can seek to understand the territory uh, of the river and its inhabitants, so it's a bottom-up approach. We can make use of sociological studies with interviews, like for example, we have done on the Rhone um, Basin on 25 subcatchments, or we can also make use of public consultation meetings, workshops, to understand how the river is seen by local inhabitants and by the different stakeholders. What are the needs of the territory? Is it health and safety, flooding, water quality? Is it leisure, fishing, walking, urbanism, and so forth? 
It can help also to see what are the possible benefits and difficulties that may come with the river restoration projects. Some of them might be temporary or more long term. Um, there might be conflicts between different water uses. And above all, it can help to build a, a truly integrated project that is not going to miss the point um, on the, the territory. It can also be a way to give a voice to a silent majority made of the public that would otherwise not be heard. Um, right, so we all recognize that uh, spending time on communication was essential. It may be time consuming and require many meetings. Um, we've just completed a marathon on the Rhone Basin of about 150 meetings to um, prepare our next program of measure, but on the Orbigo, um, Duero Basin, on the uh, Airwell, we all have, um, we all spend time on involving communities uh, during meetings, but it is essential to gain public support. We also try to provide the opportunity for private initiative, for example, on the Irpin Basin in Ukraine. They are very much proactive on this. Um, the same on the Duero Basin, on the Rhone Basin here, where all of us are trying to, to do that. We also thought that using a historical perspective to gain more, can help to gain more legitimacy. And it can place the river restoration project into the context of the catchment history. In some cases, we are challenging dams, weirs, that have not even been finished to be paid for um, by collectivities. So there is a need for coherence that a historical perspective can help to give. We also found that an institutional framework can help to have a place where the different stakeholders can meet and debate would help. It would usually be not enough to convince local people, but at least it can, it can help. And above all, we thought that we needed to be patient and innovative in the way you communicate. I'm going to share with you some innovative ways of meetings that uh, we shared within the community of practice. So our um, English friends um, had bacon butties mornings um, to encourage the farmers to attend workshops in Yorkshire um, and early morning walks to see the wildlife. Um, in the French Alps, for example, we organized kayaking or rafting to give an inside view of the river to stakeholders. Um, and for elected people, for example, it can, it can really help to understand the issues of the river. And here are some photos um, of various types of meetings that uh, are held um, in the different river basins of the community of practice. Um, engaging with children was um, also found to be a very good um, way um, to promote river restoration, explain. One uh, lesson learned from our English um, colleagues is that we should take the technical and scientific um, aspects out of work when sharing dialogue with local kids. Because after all, children just want to know where it's safe, clean, healthy, and fun. Um, also, we try to be innovative in our engagement techniques. So um, X-Factor type auditions for river model designs were organized in the UK. And you can see, for example, on the bottom left uh, picture, um, a river model that was built by um, children. Um, treasure quests on biodiversity, for example, also organized. Um, we, also, we are trying to be more and more proactive um, through the media. Um, so that is through press release, publications with books, for example. Through professional videos, we found that uh, time-lapse animations can help and achieve a lot. Um, Amos, I think, was talking about visual tools. That's what we are talking about for non-technician people. That helps a lot. Um, making the best of the internet through articles, photos, videos, um, with the social media, that can also help to reach people that wouldn't be reached otherwise. Um, mobile phone applications, for example, we released one um, in France. Now, I'm going to show you a movie that was uh, realized um, by Rosa um, from the Duero Basin Authority uh, on the workshop. In 2006, 
the Spanish Ministry of Environment kick-started the national strategy for river restoration. Its main goal was to achieve the good health status of all water bodies, as required by the European Union Water Framework Directive. Since then, the Duero River Basin Agency has carried out a number of activities specifically designed for river restoration, giving particular attention to so-called lateral and longitudinal connectivity. Results achieved until now position the Duero Basin at the forefront of river restoration in Spain, with very innovative solutions that have tackled important challenges, both from a technical point of view, due to the technologies used, or due to the sheer size of some of the projects undertaken. successful results, we often face some cultural difficulties to carry out our project because river restoration is still a quite misunderstood topic. I realized that it is very difficult uh, to get people to fully understand these new solutions based on concepts like mm, green infrastructure, room for the river, natural water retention measures, especially if they are used to seeing us doing just the opposite, that is using grey infrastructure solutions. So we, we have to work hard to communicate and explain them all these new concepts to be able to, to get people interested and engaged in the process. Aware of this difficulty, the River Basin Agency has undertaken a number of different activities to raise awareness on these new approaches and concepts and, this way, to achieve a higher level of public participation in river restoration projects. In any river restoration project, it is absolutely essential to have the support of the local people, particularly local authorities, which is why the Duero Basin Authority has developed a Mayor's School a program to increase local knowledge on river restoration and, in turn, increase the understanding and acceptance of these types of initiatives. It has also developed a series of environmental education projects for children on basic concepts like river ecosystems, which incorporate other novel aspects like the importance of ecological flows and the role of sediments to ensure the river works like a real ecological corridor. In parallel to these programs, the Duero Basin Agency has developed public outreach materials like videos, publications, as well as public participation workshops and seminars with different stakeholders and social groups, as well as technical experts, non-profit organisations, etc. Altogether, these contribute to raise the awareness on the importance of river restoration. However, knowledge is not enough. The true objective of all these activities is to engage people in river restoration. Seeking a real participation from the public in all these projects undertaken by the Duero Basin Agency in ventures undertaken like Business for Biodiversity or signing agreements with universities to collaborate with the scientific and academic community in the process of evaluating and monitoring all these activities geared to river restoration. The volunteering programme, for example, allows a direct engagement by all citizens straight out the river bank. It is also very important to involve non-profit organisations, for example, through river custody contracts. Uh, WWF has signed an agreement with the River Basin Authority to work here in the Riaza River. It's uh, called a 
water stewardship agreement and we want to include all the stakeholders. Uh, the River Basin Authority has an important role in the removing of the obstacles of the river, such as small dams. With the water stewardship, we try to involve uh, local population and volunteers and civil population in the conservation of the river. The involvement of society in river restoration is a necessity at European level and with the development of new initiatives arises the opportunity to share and exchange valuable experience and lessons learned amongst all those actors engaged in river restoration across the world. Making it easier to access new tools and exchanging experiences amongst countries will help to succeed and also to increase the effectiveness of new river restoration projects. This is the driver that has led the European Centre for River Restoration and Wetlands International to promote a community of practice amongst a number of river basins in countries like Spain, the United Kingdom, France, Ukraine and Armenia. Precisely in September 2014, this community of practice held its workshop in Leon, Spain, where public participation and stakeholder engagement were the key topics and where different representatives of the European Centre for River Restoration, Wetlands International and partner countries from the community of practice could see firsthand the results of the Urbigo project, which achieved the recovery of the natural river floodplain and all secondary channels along 25 kilometers of river. It is a project that stands out because of its sheer size, but also because of its communication strategy and public participation process that was developed to accompany the project to ensure its success. What I find truly amazing with the Orbigo River Restoration Project is the scale of the project. I mean, we are talking of 23 kilometers of ecological river restoration, an integrated project. And that scale, I think, is needed to deliver large benefits, both in terms of flood alleviation and in terms of the ecology. I mean, we've given space back to the river on 23 kilometers. This is very significant. Often, we suffer from very small-scale projects that deliver little benefits, both in terms of flood alleviation and in terms of the ecology. So I think this is truly amazing and very inspiring for me, being from France, on the community of practice. Even if the final goal of all these activities was precisely to increase the security of local people against flooding through reconnecting the floodplain with its river flow, the removal of levees was at first difficult to be understood by local people because these approaches were diametrically opposed to previous actions, which is why, to start with, some local actors were initially opposed. It was difficult at first for us to accept this project because we thought they were going to bring the river into the village, but now we can see that once the work is finished, people are going to be much safer, the riverside walk will be much nicer and much more accessible to people and they will be able to see the river. What I mean to say is that the council believes that this intervention will be extremely positive for the municipality. It was only after an intense process of public participation and engagement with the local people through meetings in villages that their support was won. Their backing strengthened when, once all the works were finished, strong floods occurred in the Orbigo with no damage for the local population which before had seen local schools and sports fields flooded, thus demonstrating the real effectiveness of the project to protect local people from floods. Seeing the project, I'm even more convinced that uh, it's an innovative project. It is a good combination on one hand of uh, river restoration technique, more the ecological part, and on the other uh, side the uh, management sustainable management of river, including other aspects, I would say more the uh, economic aspects. What I didn't know so much about what I learned today is that it's also impressive concerning the uh, preparatory part, the public participation part, uh, to be able uh, to implement it with the support of uh, the communities in, uh, in, involved in this whole uh, project. We spoke with the majors today and I was impressed by uh, their opinions, I would say strong opinions, that they are convinced that a more ecological uh, approach in combination with an economic approach is, is good for the Orbigo uh, River. 
Orbiwo, of course, is a well-known river. It was nominated last year as one of the finalists for a European River Restoration Prize. And of course, it's not for nothing. And now we can see already the results of projects that have been established over the last few years. We've spoken to the people and the villages here, and they are all very enthusiastic now. They have seen the result of restoration measures. And before, there was a little bit sepsis, sepsis uh, among the society. Of course, you understand it, uh, because people feel safe with high dams. But now they've seen and they have experienced this year some floodings, and it proved that even the water level was lower than before with the dikes. So it's a very nice example, and it proves again that uh, you have to involve the society, you have to have a good message, and you have to communicate well what is the purpose of your project and how sustainable it will be also for the future. So I think it is a nice example of cooperation with all the stakeholders involved, also for other rivers. In that case, I think Orbigo proves to be a valuable member of the community of practice for river restoration in Europe. This has been without a doubt one of the key elements of success in the River Orbigo project, to achieve the backup of the local communities in a project that due to its size is one of the most important undertaken so far in Europe. The fact that the European legislation requires the good status of our water bodies will not by itself convince people to get involved and be supportive of river restoration. It is also because of the real benefits, both economic and environmental, that river restoration offers, like preventing floods, groundwater recharge, water purification, better biodiversity, new opportunities for quality tourism and leisure activities, and better preparedness for the potential impacts from climate change. I think that the main lesson we have learned up to now is that we have to go on working to improve communication about river restoration. We have to be able to get across the real benefits of river restoration, if possible with local examples. In short, how river restoration makes perfect socioeconomic and environmental sense. We work to improve rivers because we want to improve people's life. In the end, river restoration is for people. We need people for river restoration. River restoration is for people. I've just got uh, one more slide to, to say that uh, if you want to find more information about the community of practice, um, we have just set up a Facebook page. Um, and we are working with uh, Paul Brotherton from Wetlands International, who is a communication expert. And his working with uh, such experts is actually very useful for techni technician people, maybe, who are not so used in communication techniques. Um, about the community of practice, I heard um, Hosu also from the Iberian Center of River Restoration yesterday telling how he went to Holland to see the program Room for River and how he came back to Spain and was very inspired by this. And it helped him to convince um, local people to engage in similar um, projects. And I think this is very much what, what's in there, in the community of practice. Um, Okay, I thank you for your attention. So it's going to be a demonstrated use of the Restore ECR River Wiki. I come from the Finnish Environment Institute, SUKE, and I'm also in the management board of, of ECRR. So what is or what was Restore? It was an EU Life Plus information and communication project it lasted until last year, and the lead part was environment agency in England and Wales, and there were different partners, River Restoration Centre from UK, we from Finland, Italian River Restoration Centre and DLG from, from
from the Netherlands and, and Wetlands International. And of course, we worked in close cooperation with ECRR. So here, here are the regions which we are covering most of Europe. There are some white spots also. So, and here are the, the partners which were responsible for these four regions of Europe. The goals of Restore as a project was to promote establishment of new river restoration networks and centers. And practically, for instance, in the north, it happens that we established a river restoration network in Finland. We had a center before, like Syke was the center, but we, now we have a river restoration network also working. And also a network and center was established in Poland, which was very fine, we, we think. And this project also promoted river restoration as a tool for river basin management and, and the water framework directive. So that's, that was our, our message also for the decision makers. And then this river wiki, it was a product of this restore project. And what is it? It is an online database and nowadays it contains about 800 river restoration case studies from more than 30 countries in Europe. And it is a tool for sharing best river restoration practices. And the, its aim is to be easily accessible. It, its contents are useful for policymakers and practitioners and, also, and researchers. So there are different ways to search the case studies according to country, according to coordinates and name and also according to theme. It's interactive and also anyone can create new case studies and also make the descriptions for about the cases. And there's also the possibility to comment these cases for others. And we also need monitoring results of, of case studies of river restoration. That's, that will be important for future to get, get the impressions of this and what, what, is the, what, is the, what are the results and how the cases are developing for future. So the, practically the accepting and mod moderating new cases happens through the existing national river restoration centers. So anybody can create drafts of, of new cases, but they, should, they must be then accepted and moderated. And in this stage, here's a list of, of countries and the partners that are going to be responsible for the moderating. So this, there are some question marks for several countries who is really going to be responsible responsible for new cases for some countries. There are important countries like Germany. We are not quite sure who is really going to moderate the cases for Germany. And we consider that it would be very important to, for such big countries with history of river restoration that we should get these cases more from these countries. There are active countries like UK where there are very many cases now already done. And here, here is the website where you can find the river, river wiki. And there is a possibility for navigation on the left side. I will show the site soon. And there is this, this, this search tool for searching cases and also an advanced search. And it's possible to choose a country, for instance, like Switzerland or any country, and then there will come these other possibilities for search. And then you can create these new, new cases also. Oh, this, this is the main page. And you can see here these dots of countries. There are very many examples from UK. You can see this, this red dot there showing how many cases there are now. And this is an example of this search tool. So this is the basic search, and you can see that there are different teams, like economic aspects, fisheries, 
monitoring, hydropower, and so on. And you can see also this country, this country lists. This, there, are, other, there are all countries in the world, actually, but they are not, in, not yet included in this river wiki. Some examples searching by country. For instance, according to Germany and Switzerland, there are some cases from Germany already, for instance, about hydropower. And this is an example from search by theme. And now going a bit further to this one case as example, you can have there also plans and details of the cases, like in this case about the fish pass. And then there are pictures how it, how it looks like now. You can get impressions through RiverWiki of the cases. So you can add also new pictures there. And this will be very interesting to see also the history of cases, to, to see them, how, how, the, how did they look like when they were constructed and how they are developing later on. There can be interesting photos like in this case, habitats connected with a fish pass. There's one example from Finland I took here. It's an, uh, actually a dam removal example. And it's, it's interesting because this is a small transbordering river. You can see in this map to the right, there's a side of Russia. It's, it's wood in this case, and the Finnish side is cultivated. And there was a dam. There's, there's a picture before it was an obstacle for fish migration from Russia to Finnish side. There's a picture during the restoration, how it is done by a fish specialist and the excavator, and that's how it looks like now. So now it's ac accessible for sea trout from Russia, and new habitats were created for, for sea trout. There's one example from Sweden. They call it Biocanal. It means bypass for all organisms. It's in one example in this hydropower team. And one example from Estonia. Actually, until now, we don't have any other examples than this Pirita River flowing in Tallinn city. And the, I took one picture that doesn't exist yet in this river wiki. But it's inter interesting because it's a new site in this Pirita River. It's newly created this, this autumn. But this is only to interest you that in future there will be surely one picture with water in this case when it's going through this new nature-like fish pass. So what are the advantages of using RiverWiki? You can learn of cases in other countries because principally all the river restoration methods, they are the same internationally. So you can learn, learn from other cases. And what would be important to convince also decision makers and practitioners, because if you can show that there are similar problems and similar cases that would be possible to do in, a, in one country, it's always convincing to show that it's already done somewhere. And then seeing these cases, it means you can practice virtual traveling, and it's very convenient. You can do it any time of the year, and. You need not organize anything. You just see how the sites look like. But, of course, it's, you can also plan, easily plan real site visits, first looking at the cases. You can choose cases, what to see in, in any country where you want to go. You get background info, also monitoring results, and, and contacts, whom to contact. And what would be important for future you can get your own work be seen in, through RiverWiki. And actually, I would say it means that you exist in the world of river restoration through RiverWiki. Thank you. <laughs>